This series of lunchtime conversations intends to capture um, insights from some of society's thought leaders in the very strange times that we live in. It's the 12th of May and here in the UK we're beginning to consider how to plan for recovery, albeit with maybe some mixed messages and different practice across the country. Um, part of my role at Warwick University is to make sure that our education programmes remain relevant and continue to serve the needs of society. And to do this, it's important to be part of the research and industry community. The people I'm going to speak to in this series form my professional network, and I rely on them to inform and help steer our educational offerings. We've seen seismic shifts in all areas of life, and the extraordinarily pervasive nature of COVID-19 will have lasting effects. With me today to discuss this, I have Julie Westwood, Global Head of Onboarding and Service Delivery for Travelport. Welcome to lunch, Julie. Hi, Mary. Thank you so much for inviting me along to this session. Really looking forward to it. Well, um, I've got to say, Julie, you know, you make the time to come to Warwick to deliver lectures on the MSc programmes and you do this two or three times a year which gives me the opportunity to keep up with you and the fast paced industries that you work for. Both you and your industries are pretty fast paced, I think. I don't expect that so many people will have actually heard of Travelport, um, but I imagine that everybody that's listening will be familiar with um, the websites that Travelport provides content to. So Opojo and Booking.com and TripAdvisor and all these different um, travel ports we're all so familiar with. Um, I'm correct in saying I think that Travelport is just one of three global organisations that do this. Is that correct? Yeah, there, there are really kind of three main uh, companies that provide the service that we provide, which is um, a global distribution service. And what we do is we aggregate content from travel providers globally. So from the airlines, from um, car providers, from, from hotels. We pull that all together and then we provide that as a service to organisations, to companies who then take that forward to their direct customers. So we act really as a hub of content and of rich information, gathering together all that uh, data and then providing that to our customers so that they can then distribute that onwards to their customers so that you or I or, or, or whoever can go in and we can go and find out all about a particular flight, the types of airlines, the types of costs, etc., and pull together all of our travel needs. There's three of us really within the market, and, and, and Travelport um, is a global organization working with many thousands of customers across the, the, the world and working with many thousands of, of, of suppliers to gather that information and then to hand it over and, and, and give it to our customers globally. So a fascinating um, area um, and one that's been really significantly uh, impacted by the, 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 the situation we're in at the moment. You know, we, we're very much unfortunately at the vanguard of some of the challenges that we're seeing uh, across the globe because travel has been so massively hit as borders have closed down, airlines have stopped flying, people have stopped really traveling and the stay at home message has hit, not just in the UK, but across the globe uh, mm -hmm. and across the, the, all the organizations. The last the last time we caught up was the second week in March mm -hmm. and it was, it was before you know the UK had gone into lockdown, but at the same time it was, we kind of knew it was coming, it was, it was imminent. Mm -hmm. And of course we've got so many international students that we had um, many international students from, from Asia as, as well as other areas, but they were all experiencing concerns and anxieties for their family members that were experiencing lockdown in their, in their own home countries. Um, and so I guess what struck me the conversation you and I had is that um, you were already, you were already managing that effect of that lockdown pandemic the you you were managing it already and you were already 
because so much travel had reduced in Asia at the time, you had already experienced that and you were witnessing how some of your customers, you had such a variation in the differences in the way that they reacted. Um, is that still the case? I think it is. I think one of the great strengths of Travelport is that we're a global organisation. Therefore, from a risk mitigation and perspective, then, you know, different markets will be doing different things at different paces, etc. One of the downsides of being a really global organisation is when something like this hits, which is a pandemic, a global pandemic, we get hit across the entire board. But what we have seen is that difference, as you've said. What we've seen is basically a rolling change coming from Asia Pacific through to Europe. Europe then became the epicenter through to the Americas. America, um, depending on who you talk to, is then the epicenter. Um, and, and therefore, the change in policies, the change in implications and impacts then rolling through the globe. What we're seeing at the moment, I think, is the start of some and I, I, I'm, I'm terrified to say some green shoots, uh, but but some some you know some changes, some positive changes, particularly within the Asia Pacific area, as some of those countries move out of the full lockdown measures, um, and we start to see some movement. Now the challenge that we've got is there's nowhere really to go because so many other countries are in lockdown but we are starting to see that and and it has been a, a really interesting place to be watching how both different governments and different cultures have reflected and have changed as the changing environment has hit us. Mm -hmm. We're definitely seeing differences as it goes through the globe and we are certainly from an organisational perspective really hopeful that we'll start to see some pickups in some different areas and that also will help to give confidence to those countries that are still in lockdown that are still really seeing that challenge challenge that there is some positivity there and we can start to see that movement, that change. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I guess that, that kind of the, the, the global way that your organisation works, have you managed to absorb any this big variation in the demand and in the amount of the scale of your work? Have you managed to absorb that variation or is it something that's hit you? Will, you know, will it recover quickly in, in your own organisational working patterns? Mm -hmm. I think I think from a market perspective, who knows? I think I mean one of the things that we do and have done um, since this started is we've been you know really looking and analysing what's happening within markets, trying to second guess, trying to look at the indicators about what's happening, gathering as much information that we can about what what what's occurring, and then I think we're on plan A, B, C. I don't know how many plans we've got, and we're deploying those uh, uh, across the board. I think what what we're trying to do is plan for the various different. Um, uh, curves that we can see coming out of this, the recovery curves and the difference the differences on a market perspective. But what we're also doing from a from a business, from a an organizational perspective, is trying to play into those. So, you know, in some areas we're very we're very badly hit. How can we deploy our organisation, our people from other areas that might not be so badly hit in order to absorb. So, the, so you know, there's some some real kind of um, juggling that we're trying to do. We're trying to second guess what's happening in, within market and trying to get ourselves positioned that from a workforce perspective, from a work perspective, we are readied when that does occur, but within an environment which is pretty opaque right mm. now who knows what the recovery is going to look like and on the other hand we're also trying to just play in wherever we can do the ability from a global player perspective to support our people to support our customers from wherever is relevant and wherever we can do to maintain momentum to maintain viability wherever we possibly can do. Mm. And, and look, from the from that kind of idea of understanding the market demand to service it better. So um, in my in my understanding, you know, the servicing of the travel industry that because because less people will fly, whatever, whatever, however long term that is in certainly in the mm -hmm. medium term, there will be less flights um, and and maybe the appetite for 
for going on holiday, for vacation and for business travel will mm -hmm. reduce quite substantially. Do, do, will you will you look for ways to like repurpose your your core capabilities for like so you know flights are going maybe train travel will increase maybe and your ability to absorb all that information and then populate content in different ways it, will you look to differentiate and repurpose it or will you will you look for ways to just to, not just but to maintain the demand profile you've got I think I think it's an interesting one because I don't think any bets are off right now as to how you react and what you do. There is a school of thought that says, OK, you just carry on doing what you're good at. Actually, at a moment like this, you double down and you focus on what your core competency is. Our core competency is around that aggregation of content. Is that around flight or is it actually around non-flight stuff? What do we do? Mm. Um, but but to double down in that area, or do you try to diversify? Um, I, 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 I don't think, as I said, any bets are off with regards to how one does actually react to that. I think we're still very much at the, although it feels particularly in the UK, six or seven weeks into lockdown that we're, we're, <laughs> we're right in the middle of it. I think we still are at the start of some of these challenges as the change occurs we don't know how systematic that change will be that when lockdown starts to come off everybody will go wow i need to travel what does that look like you know and that is one scenario that one could look at or whether or not as you say there is a a a, a dilution in the need for travel or the perceived need for travel and therefore there will be an overall contraction within the marketplace um so i, I think there are two there are different routes, whether or not you double down and just do what you're really good at and yep. just do that in a slightly different way or whether or not you expand. I think as an organisation, we're looking at both of those, but it, it's certainly a debate. It's certainly mm -hmm. a debate as to which way you go. Yeah, that's OK. Thank you. And so, Julie, um, just a, on a personally nosy note, um, how are you getting on? What are you doing to pass time? You are um, for, for if anybody's listening into this conversation, you um, you're one of your hobbies is such a fast paced hobby of rally driving. And and I think that that kind of interest in just second guessing what's just coming around the corner all the time really helps and um, really, really matches well with who you are. You know, it just is who <laughs> you are. And so like, how how are you coping without having an event like that um, for your pastime? Um, it's really challenging. There's no motorsport. There's no motorsport whatsoever, which is really challenging because I like to compete and I like to watch and I like to be involved and I like to marshal. So, um, so I also like to do stuff. So, um, if I can't do that, then then um, it's kind of, what can I do? Um, which uh, it, it has been the kind of the focus and the theme, I think, for me on a personal basis um, over the past few weeks. So um, my house is getting a makeover right now, I think, like many people. Um, <laughs> I'm seeing the inside of drawers that I've never seen before as I clean things that I've never done that before. So I think it's just refocusing on on, on what you can do and to, to, to move forward. But I, I am missing. I am missing going out and doing things and I'm missing just getting in the car and going for a drive. It's just it's those small mundane things that you just entirely take for granted. I think if I take anything from this experience, it's to try to not take those things for granted, that the very ability to jump in the car and go somewhere, maybe not to a motorsport sport event, just maybe just to drive somewhere is 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 a pleasure that I hope I will, I will, I will still retain when we come out of it. But I think for me, it's been what can I do, and 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 and, and what can I get done that I've never had time to do because my life has been so super busy. Um, it has been quite nice to be able to get on with some things that I just haven't been able to 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 focus on up until now around the house and all those basics. Like many many people, I'm sure are doing very much the same as I am. Mm. And and thank you. Um, and and I guess in the way of working, you know, you are a global company, and I guess it's a it's a data driven. Uh, would you say it's a data driven industry that you work? Would you describe it as that, or where would you put it? I would. You know, I our business very oddly, I would say, is a relationship based business. So, mm -hmm. although we 
um, have huge data centers, data uh, uh, and, and the provision of the aggregation of the distribution of data is what we do. The way in which we get that business, the way in which we maintain that business, the way in which we grow that business is actually based on relationships. So it's a real dichotomy because at its very core, it's very hard. You know, it's it's providing that data within that millisecond to that screen or to that 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 travel agent. But the way in which we grow is working with the agents, working with the travel agents themselves, working with the operations people who are gathering that data. So, so actually, it's been a really big challenge for us to move from that one-to-one -one relationship going and talking to our customers to a different positioning, talking to them on screen, trying to move things forward within an industry that is badly hit and impacted across the globe. And that is used to that one-to-one -one conversation to drive business forward. So it's been it's been a really fascinating challenge for us to maintain those relationships in these difficult times, to maintain the, those conversations and to reset the way in which we do those. You know, we're so used to, as a company, going out and going to a client site, going and talking to them, going and doing some discovery work to understand how we can help them move their business forward, look at the requirements that they have, to doing that via screens, by doing that without that human to human direct interaction. Um, and it's been both challenging and fascinating and fascinating in equal measure as to how mm. we've managed to kind of move that and, and, and shift that dial really. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Good. I mean, it is, it's, it's uh, I mean, I find it fascinating how, how much it, it enables some um, groups to, to, to communities to come together that wouldn't normally have come together and have quite um, meaningful conversations that wouldn't wouldn't easily come about anyway. And then other groups are finding it hard to maintain a kind of dynamic and energy. And I find that I find it's just it's curious how the content of our own conversations and relationships are are ebbing and moving a little bit within within this within this virtual online working environment that m many of us have moved to. Yeah, yeah. OK, well, um, so. Thank you. Thank you very, very much um, for sharing these insights with us, Julie. And there, you know, you know that they're they're enormously useful to me, and I value the conversations we have enormously. They don't just inform how I how I will shape and steer the educational programs, but they inform my practice. And for that, I'm really I'm very grateful that you are so generous with with your thoughts and your ways of thinking about work. And um, for any students that are listening to this, of course, fabulous secondary data right here for them to use in their dissertations. Um, and for the wider Warwick network who may be interested to hear, uh, it's just really, really valuable to get from people who are delivering from all sorts of different places, but leaders in these industries. So thank you very much, Julie. And um, if anyone else would like to listen to or would like to hear more from Julie, um, then please contact me directly. I'm on Warwick's website and if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, follow the link on the closing slide and you'll get to me. Um, and this series will also be made available as a podcast. So thank you very much, Julie, and uh, enjoy your lunch. Thank you.